7.30 a.m. Walking in the hospital. We have pictures today, so that's why we dressed up. I'm on call today. It's 5.30 a.m. I get up tomorrow. I'm 12, 11 or 12. So, 30 hours to go. See you shortly. So we are here in the ER, seeing a patient with a fracture of the wrist. We use this x-ray machine here, and also we use these finger traps to uh, get their bones back out in a better position. I'm reviewing the CT scan of a uh, patient who was involved in a motor vehicle accident. He has a uh, fracture of his superior ramus here, as well as uh, the inferior ramus here. And, uh, these are uh, 3D recons which uh, we get reformatted from a, a CT scan. He has a big fracture in the sacrum back here. That's gonna to need to be fixed. Flip it this way. You can see that fracture a little bit better. Here and here. As well as the sacrum. Big pressure here. So we're gonna to need to, in surgery, put a screw across this area here, either one to two screws here, and possibly a screw down his uh, anterior column of his um, uh, pelvis. significant as well as her uh, patellofemoral joint again maybe a little bit of change there in the patella but not significant. She has her scope picture as you can see in the patella a little bit of uh, chondrosis here but otherwise in her, uh, her uh, compartments Eight-year-old gentleman who came in, he fell off of a uh, ladder. We're going to fix this uh, distal radius fracture here. Into the fracture. So he has a uh, comminuted, which means a lot of different pieces. Another view uh, fracture. So we're going to uh, put a plate and some screws. I'm going to go over a uh, Bowler Henry approach to the uh, to the uh, distal radius. So right over the SCR tendon. Take pickups and some uh, small rakes. Any uh, pickup loops? There you go. Do you want some small rakes or hooks? I got hooks. Or send back. Get some sends. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting these little small bleeders. Put it across his hand. Yeah. It's anonymous, please. Anonymous is coming up, sir. Back. Oh, no, 
I'm just going right over the SCR sheet. Just open up the sheet. Whatever you don't see, you can't see what that is right there. We gotta use some uh, synonymies to open it up. Synonymies? Yes, fine. Way big tonight. Alright, that's all I have. You don't have any? There's no tonight because I got any. Yeah. I can try to get you some little ones, but uh, I don't even know what set those would be in right now. So you're going to take your SCR to the owner side and then under it should be our FTL. Grab this right here. Knife, please. So this is the uh, kind of posterior sheath of the SCR, then as a herniation of it, if it's a FDL, as well as swelling, fracture. Uh, is the knife back? There we go. A lot of times in fractures, everything is kind of distorted. So, and then under your FPL should be your pronator quadratus. And the reason why we know it's pronator quadratus is because uh, the fibers they go a different direction. They will just use their finger as a blunt dissection. Cool. All right. Let's see, Army Navy, please. Hold that right there. And this is your uh, this is your portrait. Let me see the uh, knife back. It makes it just a little bit bigger. So we don't need to go this way for that. You gotta be careful on the mid forearm. The uh, up here, on the radio artery kind of crosses the forearm. Down here, just to be safe. But. Just leaving the hospital, looking for my car. This is uh, my call room. It's where I sleep. I have a computer in here. Some uh, white coats. Some push-up bars, some weights. Here, just in case you wanna Get your swallow on. Middle of the night, this is my call bed here. It needs to be made, so I need to call housekeeping. We have a bathroom. Light. A shower. So, this is where, when I don't have surgery in the middle of the night or nothing really is going on, I sleep in this room right here in the call room. So, it is 12. 45 p.m. I have been at work for uh, let me calculate that since uh, 5 30 yesterday a.m. so that makes that it's kind of hard to even calculate that at this point about 30 plus hours I don't know you lose track after a while um, I'm exhausted got a little bit of sleep last night but we were fairly busy all day yesterday, lots of traumas that came in, gunshot wounds, patients who, were, who needed uh, emergent surgery. Um, I just finished a three hour surgery, which, um, a surgery that I've never done before, which I did by myself. My uh, staff came in for a couple minutes and then just gave me some pointers, but I uh, finished a, uh, the case by myself and I thought it went fairly well. Um, but it's been a long night, I'm, I'm exhausted. It is 12.45 p.m. Um, 
I've been at the hospital since yesterday, like I said, around 5.30 a.m. I'm gonna go home, get some sleep for a couple hours, um, do some studying and that when I get up, finish some charts and notes from patients that I saw overnight, and then uh, get ready to do it again. Possibly, I try to go to the gym a little later. I guess to get a workout in. Talk to you soon. out uh, work out 30 45 minutes a real quick workout so I can get in and out and get home and do some work uh, with my busy residency schedule uh, it's important that I work out so I try to make time for that but it has to be very efficient so I had to get a pretty good workout a lot of people ask me about uh, finding balance especially with a busy surgery schedule um, it is pretty hard to do that it takes um, it takes some time to kind of learn what you need to accomplish during the day to be uh, kind of effective. You only have 24 hours in a day. If you work for 12 to 14 hours of that day, you have about 10 hours left. So you have to divide that up between studying, family, friends, uh, work, and other responsibilities. So you have to just figure out what's most important for you. And going out with your friends late at night and partying or hanging out with uh, your uh, coworkers uh, may have to be on the back burner. Uh, just make sacrifices and you'll get it done. So I get emails all the time from people asking me, so how do you try to find, find time to uh, balance your busy, Residency, work hours, with personal life, still have time to work out, study, spend time with your family. If you are spiritual, spend time in your, your uh, particular religion of choice. Um, it's hard. It takes it, it takes time. It takes basically years to um, come up with that balance. When I first started medical school, it was hard to kind of balance. Uh, my studies because I, I thought I needed to study like all the time, like all day, otherwise I would feel like I was far behind. Um, but over the years, you develop certain systems and certain strategies that you put into place that uh, help you with balance. And 
you have to figure out what's most important. So you only have 24 hours in the day. If you work for 14 of those, you got 10 hours left to sleep, spend time with your family, to study. So you need to divide that those hours up accordingly. So I'm very, I have a very regiment day-to-day um, -day schedule. And I know I need to study for at least an hour and a half, two hours each night. I like to work out, so it keeps me sane. So that's important for me. Uh, spending time with um, hanging out with friends and going out for drinks, that has to be on the back burner. And you just have to make sacrifices. So if you're kind of concerned about finding balance and how do I gonna have time to do this, how am I gonna find time to do that, it will all work out in the end and you'll figure out what's most important for you and kind of prioritize um, those uh, things that are most important, you'll accomplish them. Um, but it, it does take some years and it takes time to, um, like I said, to find that balance. I ran home, realized I didn't have uh, food, haven't been at home in two days, I've been at work, so I came to the grocery store. So it is uh, about 11 p.m. I just got done studying. I'm about to get some sleep um, and start the whole process over again tomorrow. Uh, thank you guys for watching for the last uh, kind of two days or so. Um, I really enjoyed uh, kind of putting this together. If you guys have any more questions, email me at overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or contact me on my website, antoniawebmd.com. See you next time.